Giga Chad Cerebro 5, dude. What is up, everybody? I'm Nolux Given here with your afternoon snap. And today, for one day only, we have Nidavalir as the featured location, which presents us with a really unique opportunity the ability to try Cerebro 5. So, we're playing a bunch of really weird cards in this deck. Our curve caps out at five power. That's going to be the strongest cards that we can play in our deck. And then we're going to be giving Cerebro, Adam Warlock, and Iron Man plus five power as well. So that way Cerebro will also pump those things up. Bishop is kind of a weird one in the deck, but if you play it on turn three and then turn four, you play a card, turn five, you play a card, and turn six, you play two cards, then it is also a five power card for you. So now we're going to drop Iron Man into Nidavellir. Iron Man is really, really strong in Nidavellir because you wind up getting plus 10 power out of all of your cards there. So it's pretty synergistic with the featured location as well. And honestly, probably one of the reasons that this deck actually works. But we're going to take a look at some really fun games with this deck today. I was playing it a bunch last night, just messing around. I don't think it's necessarily a good deck. I want to get that out of the way first, but it is extremely fun and more importantly, extremely unique. Today being really the only day that you can actually make this deck work. So my opponent with Daredevil going to see that that Iron Man is coming and they decide to meet the Iron Man with a Hobgoblin. So they're going to add some negative power to Nidavellir. It's only minus three power. It puts us down to four. I think we're going to be able to climb out of this hole by the end of the turn. And what my opponent is not expecting is for us to add a whole bunch more power to Kun Loon with Cerebro. Or maybe they were expecting it because they retreated. That was honestly a pretty basic game with the deck, to be totally honest, just to introduce it here, get you guys familiar with some of the strategies, but this game is going to get a little bit zanier, and part of that is due to the fact that we have Limbo. So we're going to have an additional turn to play cards. I almost put Magic in this deck, just so that way we would have some extra time to play these random five power cards, and also because there aren't that many five power cards in Marvel Snap even, we're just playing with what we got. So we got some weird ones in the deck like Namor and Omega Red. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the deck list towards the end. I'm sure there are people uh, ready to make some comments, but we're just having fun with it today. And then I'm going to play Omega Red into the kiln. I figured that was the best choice for the turn before the kiln shuts down for good. And my opponent played a Debris last turn. Debris is actually another card that I was thinking about playing in this deck. It will add zero power rocks to Nidavellir, which don't mess with any of your Cerebro shenanigans, and you'll be able to pump them up with Cerebro, as we see here, which is pretty nice. And then if you want to get tricky, you can use Polaris to remove your opponent's rock from Nidavellir, which gives them five less power than they thought they were going to have. So thought that would be kind of an interesting synergy. Didn't wind up going with it, uh, but it is definitely one way that you can play the deck. But one other synergy that is in the deck with Polaris is Miles Morales, which again, we're just playing it because we need to play some cards that uh, have five power. But you can actually make it work with this deck being able to uh, move some things around with Polaris and then you have a cheaper Spider-Man later on. One other silly card that we're playing is Wolfsbane. You want to play Wolfsbane at a location when there are exactly two other cards at that location. That way it's getting plus four power and will also be a card for you to pump up with Cerebro. If you play Wolfsbane and there's more cards at the location, you're going to lose all of your Cerebro buffs on everything. So make sure you're paying attention to that. After some deliberating here, there's a lot of different moves that we can make. Ultimately, I'm going to decide that I want to mystique my Cerebro. And part of the reason that I'm doing this Adding more power over into the kiln will allow us to be winning by 10 in that location, and then we'll be able to spread some more love around with Omega Red. So that was part of my thought process here. We're going to see those tentacle arms slap out now as we are uh, now up ahead by 13 in that location, and then we'll Polaris and move my opponent's rock. Now, it's not going to be uh, catching them 
off guard because we did it on the penultimate turn, but that means we will get to play Miles Morales on the cheaper here. Unfortunately, my opponent is going to Rogue my Cerebro, which isn't that great for them, but it is a little bit awkward for me. It means that we're no longer up by 10 in the kiln, so we're not spreading the love over there, and we are still winning in the kiln, uh, so that part's nice. But uh, we're definitely going to be losing Nidavellir now because we pulled out their rock and they can just put anything in that place. Though we are making them at least have to play something in that location, which is nice. Uh, Wolfsbane could work here. We could just go Wolfsbane Namor. Uh, but I probably want to play Iron Man. That's probably the most power. Iron Man's going to count for 14, whereas all of my other cards are just going to add 7. I am doing some math to see if this is like some weird corner case where I actually would want to Wolfsbane after playing Iron Man, uh, but then I realize that I don't even have the energy for it, and it is worse. Um, so I am just going to throw down Miles Morales and Iron Man, and I throw them down in this order, just because it's like slightly better against Leader, though I don't think that it really matters here too much. We're going to play both of those, double our 14 up to 28. My opponent plays a Maximus, and that's not going to be enough. Will Silver Surfer be enough, though? All of their cards cost three. No, it's not quite going to be enough. They have a huge lead in Nidavellir, but we are able to take the other two locations. Two other short tidbits about the deck that I wanted to share as well is the deck actually does do well against Leader, especially when you're playing Mystique to copy an Iron Man. Your opponent's Mystique isn't going to have a target, and so it's not going to be quite as useful. So that is a nice little way to steal some wins as well. And of course, if you are playing Iron Man, that's also a nice way to get around Leader because I'm adding eight power to this location in the final turn. I guess my opponent's also adding a leader and Miles Morales, but that definitely got me out of some sticky situations. One other thing that can get you out of some sticky situations with this deck, if you're going to find locations like Death's Domain or Sanctum Sanctorum, where you can't actually play cards in that location, there's no just natural movement or grow wide, Unfortunately, we're not playing Doctor Doom in this deck because then the Doctor Doom goes into Nidavellir and you're playing Tenbro. It just doesn't really work out as much as you'd like it to. So because of that, one thing that you can do with this deck to grow wide in uh, some capacity is use Omega Red on Nidavellir and then just put all of your power into that location to make sure that you win it. Now, I'm not sure exactly what's going on with my opponent this game. Maybe they just wanted to clear up some room so that way they could play more cards with Bishop. But either way, I'm just going to try to put as much power as I possibly can into Nidavellir, and then by winning that location, we can potentially win in Death's Domain as well. So that's the idea in this one, uh, and definitely something that you can do with the deck. It came up once or twice in a few of my games, but uh, you just need to win Nidavellir by throwing a bunch of cards. It's a pretty, um, like vanilla win in this one. We didn't even use Iron Man and Mystique, but you can go for that. You can go Omega Red into Iron Man, into Mystique on Iron Man, and just crush Nidavellir, so that way you win some locations that you otherwise wouldn't be able to play into. And I just had to include this game against fellow content creator Binks Plays. This game was a ton of fun. Binks also had some nice stuff to say after the game. I'll throw in a clip of that. But we're going to lead off with Adam Warlock into Nidavellir, which is really, really strong in this deck. If your opponent doesn't play a card into Nidavellir, you just get a card for free off Adam Warlock on turn two. Now, Binks does play Invisible Woman, but that's actually pretty good for us. That means that we're going to be able to get an early lead in Nidavellir, which will give us some extra card draw and hopefully enough options to be able to take this one. I am thinking about just playing a bishop, and the main reason to do that is the bishop out early. Uh, then, like I said, you can play a card on four, card on five, and two cards on six, so that way bishop gets that plus two from Cerebro as well. But I want to draw some cards, so at risk of letting Binks know 
what we're gonna be doing this game. I'm gonna throw Cerebro into Nidavellir. And honestly, um, this just confused him because uh, a player like Binks that knows the game so well was very confused to, that they actually thought that I made a mistake here, uh, thinking that this wasn't going to work out uh, how I wanted to with Cerebro, but they don't know exactly what we have in store here. And we're gonna confuse them a little bit more even. I think the best play on curve is Namor. And one thing that's kind of interesting, and I'll talk about this in um, a, a few clips from now in, uh, in a second, but there is the possibility to kind of do like a Cerebro 10 thing in this deck. If you leave Namor by itself, and now if I were to play some five cost cards to uh, Nidavellir, or five power cards to Nidavellir, uh, like Omega Red, Omega Red would turn into a 10 power card, and then we have Namor and Omega Red both getting that Cerebro buff. So that is potentially an angle that you can play with the deck using Namor, Though, to be honest, I'm not sure that you should actually play Namor in the deck. We'll talk about that in a second. But Binks is going to play a Ghost Rider over into the Danger Room. I was actually thinking that maybe Binks was playing like a uh, Omega Red style deck themselves. The Ben Brode deck where you want to play Iron Man and Omega Red into Nidavellir and try to grab a big win and use Invisible Woman so that way your opponent doesn't know what you're doing. So... That's kind of what I thought was going on initially. Now I know that they are definitely playing a reanimator deck. And this one's on me. I thought that Polaris here would move Invisible Woman and then Binx's Hella would be revealed first before he was able to discard any cards. Now, unfortunately, it's not how it works. So you live and you learn. We learn this interaction here. His cards are still going to flip up in the order that he played them. So Swordmaster is going to discard Giganto. Hellcow is going to discard Death and Captain Marvel. And then Hell is going to flip over and reanimate all of those cards. But it is still super, super close. All of the cards go to the Danger Room. And we're winning in Nidavellir and the Danger Room. But then Captain Marvel moves over for the win. A really, really close game. If I just didn't play Polaris, if I had played Wolfsbane or anything else, then uh, those cards wouldn't have been able to snag the win in Nidavellir. So really, really close one. Unfortunately, just didn't know the mechanics with Polaris and Invisible Woman, but still quite a sweet game. Giga Chad Cerebro 5, dude. That dude, that dude's the truth. I'm gonna go give him a sub over on YouTube. To wrap this video up, I wanted to take a look at the deck list and talk about some card choices here. Now, a lot of it is pretty straightforward. We're just playing everything with five power that we could in Marvel Snap and it basically builds itself from there. Uh, there are a few things that I'm playing or not playing though that I think we should at least talk about. Uh, one of those things is going to be Doctor Doom. I brought that one up, why I don't like it. Some things that you could potentially try out in the deck, though, are going to be Debris, Magic, and then another one is Onslaught. We looked at that game where you go big with Omega Red, and Onslaught could be a fun way to just really, really go over the top in that location, then you're spreading eight power to the other two locations, and it could be fun. It, it's like an alternate game plan, right? Uh, one other thing that you could try out, though I don't think it's going to work, is Spectrum. We've got a lot of ongoing cards in the deck, enough that you're probably going to give everything to power, and it's one of the few five power cards that I omitted from the deck. The trick is with Spectrum, sure, you bring all of your other cards to seven, so that way they are still getting broed up, but then Spectrum is still only at five, at which point, why are you playing that? It, it didn't, it doesn't really make uh, full sense there. Two other cards, though, that I would be remiss not to mention, because I just kind of forgot. Um, well, one of them I didn't forget. We're gonna switch over to this deck list here. First is Titania. I just don't have it. I wasn't gonna sell out of uh, 300 collector's tokens just to pick that one up for a silly video. But Star-Lord, I just 
forgot about. So I'm sure there are plenty of comments telling me to play Star-Lord. I realized it after all of my games were concluded. I will say Star-Lord is a little bit awkward on turn two specifically because your opponent is very often going to play to Nidavellir if possible on turn two and you don't want to play Star-Lord in Nidavellir. You want to play him in one of the other two locations. Now that said it is still probably a pretty powerful card worth including for just a nice play on the final turn. You can play Star-Lord plus Miles Morales or even Star-Lord plus Titania plus Wolfsbane or Polaris or something like that. So that gives you a lot of options to dump a bunch of power on the final turn and means that that card is probably worth including, but I just forgot about it. But you can still try it. If you want to play Cerebro 5 today, check it out. I will be back actually with more Nidavellir content tomorrow. I figured as one of the only content creators with Null, I should try to do something with Null and Nidavellir. So just tried to make the biggest Null that I could, and we'll look at that tomorrow. So subscribe and stay tuned for more sweet daily Marvel Snap content. But for today, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lux Given. Peace. I'm gonna go give him a sub over on YouTube.